Today I have the privilege to be a Maipo Nature Reserve, a very diverse wetland here in Hong Kong. Since 1983, WWF Hong Kong is actively managing this reserve, where they combine the conservation of this unique local habitat with the education of the public. Please join us today in the exploration of this park, together with Catherine Lung, Senior Reserve Officer at WWF Hong Kong. Catherine, can you explain in a nutshell what wetlands are and why they are so important for our global ecosystem? Yeah, wetland is actually where the water meets the lands. And a more general uh, definition is that where there are high tides, the water depth of this wetland uh, didn't exceed six meters. So you can find wetland along the coastal area, including like coral reefs, sandy beaches, uh, rocky shores, and also uh, estuaries. And in the inland side, you can also find freshwater wetland, including lakes and streams and rivers. So these wetlands are sometimes called a kidney for the earth because they help the water system and uh, filtering the pollutants from the water. So they are very, very important. And they are also uh, provide a lot of resources for human beings. My Po comprises of several types of wetlands. Can you tell us more about them? Yeah, you can find uh, five types of wetland in my Po. So start from the coastal side is the mud flat, where we call it the uh, dining table for the migratory water birds. You can find a lot of crabs and mosquito, a lot of various food from birds. And then uh, come back to the, uh, to the landward side is the mangroves. It's their intertidal mangroves, uh, special types of trees which can adapt to the uh, wetland area. And then further back to the landward side, you can find a uh, reed bed, which are a very uh, ecological uh, habitat because you can find over 400 species of insect in the reed bed, which these are bird, uh, birds' favorite food. And also you can find freshwater pond, like where we are, yeah, water lilies and where dragonflies loves. And also the special one is the gateway, which are intertidal shrimp ponds, which is uh, very special to the coastal area in Southeast Asia. Many birds benefit from the wetlands of Maipo. It's known as a haven for local birds and especially for migrating birds. Symbolic for the great work of WWF Hong Kong is the black-faced spoonbill. Catherine, can you explain a little bit more about this endangered species? Yeah, the black-faced spoonbill, as its name said, it's got, has got a black face and the bill shape is like a spoon. But uh, when it's feeding, it's actually not using the bill as a spoon. When it's feeding, it will swing its head around the water and try to locate fish and shrimp. So uh, the size of a black-faced spoonbill is about one meter in height. And then uh, it's an endangered species globally and uh, is endemic to the East Asia. And the global population nowadays is around 3,200, uh, which has improved a lot since the uh, 1990s. And um, Hong Kong is the second largest wintering site for black-faced spoonbill. You can find the spoonbill here from October until May in the next year. What is your favorite bird? Uh, it's very hard to pick uh, my favorite bird. So, uh, but for my poll, I think uh, the most fascinating birds here must be the migratory shorebirds, which include a lot of species. Uh, around springtime, you can find over 30 species in a day. So each year during spring, they migrate from the wintering ground in the south, including like uh, Australia and Southeast Asia, back to Maipo, dressing in their beautiful breeding plumage. Um, so they come in various uh, shapes, size, and bill shape. So they actually feed on different types of food on the mud flat. So, and they migrate long distance every year, which I think is really, really magical. So how about you? What is your favorite bird? I really like uh, kingfishers mm. because they're very colorful. They uh, are very unique in their fishing techniques. They're ingenious in the way they build their nests by uh, digging tunnels and things. And my absolute favorite is not a single bird, but a bird performance. A flock of dunlings accomplishing fantastic air acrobatics that easily surpass firework shows, an other unraveled mystery of nature. It was fascinating. My kids would love that. They're also WWF uh, members. Um, when I told them I would meet a bird expert here in Hong Kong, they asked me some questions. Um, how high can birds fly? How fast can they fly? Yeah, the uh, highest b flying birds now uh, on record is the bar-headed geese. 
uh, which uh, they migrate each year from Central Asia to uh, South Asia. And in the middle of the migratory path is the Mount Everest. So they have to fly over that, which is over 7,000 kilometers in height. Uh, for the fastest uh, flying birds uh, must be the peregrine falcon. As they dive in to get their prey, they can uh, get up to the speed above 200 km per hour. And how do migrating birds find their way back to these wetlands? Mm, scientists are still uh, thinking about uh, making sure how they actually did it. Uh, some suggestions including they navigate from the uh, star and moon, uh, the direction of these, and also the magnetic field of the Earth might help. And some also suggest that they can recognize the shape of the coastal area so they can locate the same wetland each year. You really know a lot. How long have you already been working here in my boat? I've been here for nearly 10 years. And uh, what motivated you, inspired you to start working here? Yeah, uh, when, I'm, when I was young, I watched a lot of documentaries and my parents always uh, bring me to the country parks for hiking. So I have always been enjoying the wildlife a lot. Of course, my Po's biodiversity is not only about its more than 400 bird species. My Po has a lot more to offer, ranging from over 40 crabs, including the fiddler crab, butterflies, dragonflies and other insects, five large terrestrial animals like the Asian mongoose, and many fish, including the mudskipper. Yeah, the mudskipper are uh, most abundant on the mudflat. What's special about them is they can walk on the mudflat with their fin, and also they are highly territory. So as you see them on the mudflat, they would defend their burrows and then fight against any other mudskipper which try to enter their territories. A very funny fish, the mudskipper. It looks like an amphibian, but it's not. But you do have amphibians, like the tree frogs that come out in the dark. Catherine, thank you very much for this wonderful educational tour. Keep up the good work. Thank you for watching. Take care of your local environment and if you happen to be in Hong Kong, please visit and support this truly unique Maipo Nature Reserve.